I came to the topic of war stories, the subtitle Fighting, Competing, Imagining, Leading, because of a fascination with the language that we often hear in business circles. Think of black knight, white knight, regulatory capture, hostile takeovers. I mean, the terms are many and come up routinely in conversations about how to do business. The, the, the that focus together with a focus that you see in contemporary American culture on military engagement seem to me mirror aspects of the same general attitude towards problems that we face as a nation and solutions that we have articulated for them. You can see it in our hallowed leaders. You take us back to George Washington. He did indeed start as a general and then became our first president. Uh, dial forward to someone like Calvin Coolidge, 1925, after all the cheap business of the American people is business. Uh, take another step or two forward, and Dwight Eisenhower, again a general, and then president, warning us of the danger to American democracy of what he termed the military-industrial complex. I think we're still there today. And to the extent that that represents a tradition that has, in fact, in many ways, helped us to assert our presence in the world, uh, but at the same time brought with it costs that I think we are at this point a little loath to uh, face, I have proposed in the book a model for business engagement that might work its way back into our general stance towards the world and possibly push us to something that looks a little more communal, a little more collaborative, less inclined to the aggressive. It won't cost us uh, American exceptionalism. It won't cost us the profits that we believe help to fuel our business community, but it will take us to a different place where we do, and we talk about this routinely here at MIT Sloan in the classroom, uh, treating people as assets, not as costs, recognizing that both managers and employees have an emotional intelligence that needs to be cultivated, recognizing that we have a lot of different ways of thinking about leadership. I think at Sloan we, we talk routinely about distributed leadership along with transactional, transformational, situational, and traits-based leadership. It's all out there. What I've experienced too in working with vets, so military service vets here at, at MIT Sloan, is that they recognize the importance of those leadership methods. The sort of stereotypical military command and control model does not work for them on a day-to-day -day basis in the field. And I've had conversations with senior military figures who have had the same experience and come to the same realizations and make the same case for their own services. And so then the question becomes for us, how do we use our military leadership, our, our business model to affect uh, how we position ourselves in the world and recreate what, what qualifies, I think, as an American vision uh, for itself and for society? I think we can do it. Benefit corporation, the principle that you don't have to think solely in terms of maximizing shareholder value seems to me fundamental. We are looking at ways of democratizing the workplace, having democratized the political order long since, and it, as we proceed with that experiment, I think we will come to a place where that business model, which is an American business model, can make us feel more at peace with the world and prevent what otherwise might look like the potential for self-destruction.